Welcome to Lessons from the Lab. This video will cover the test methods that BIC uses to assess defoaming properties in different coating formulations. Mashid, can you walk us through your first thoughts when selecting a defoamer for a system? First, I would consider what the customer wants. Are they looking to improve the deforming efficiency of their current system? Are they seeing film defects that they need to improve? Do they have any new regulatory needs? What technology is the customer using? Is it water-based or solvent-based? What type of resin system is in their formulation? What is the end use and how will the product be applied? It's also necessary to consider where the foam comes from. The most common reason is incorporation of foam during the manufacturing process, but also important is the type of substrate, final paint and coatings application, and proper wetting of the pigments and the fillers. Other parameters like the proper blade, shear, and tank size in the production process are key factors when assessing foam generation. Of course, each scenario will bring a different set of test methods. Can you guide us through the first test that you will conduct in the lab? We know that the deformer must be compatible enough to not cause extra defects like craters, but incompatible enough to be active and show deforming properties. This is a quick and easy test to determine if the deformer will be too incompatible with the system before going through the full set of tests. This is a great start when we have various additives to screen. It can save time prior to evaluation, and it's quick and easy to perform. What other test methods do we usually use to evaluate deforming performance in a coating? The roller test is one of the most common test methods for evaluating deformers in architectural paint. We create turbulence to incorporate air into the paint. Another standard deformer evaluation test for architectural paint is the brush test. After incorporating the deformer, half of the area is stippled by brush to incorporate more air into the system. In both methods, macro and micro foam will be evaluated. Our lab also conducts a pour-out test, a unique method independent of the end use. This method incorporates foam into the sample by mixing it for 3 minutes at 4 meters per second mixing rate. In this test, a foam generation could be higher due to incorporating a reasonable amount of shear during the mixing process, so deformer efficiency will be easily noticed. We place the resin or paint into a cylinder. A disc with holes moves up and down in and out of the liquid for a certain amount of time. The volume of the resin or paint is measured uh, as soon as the test is completed to calculate the volume of the introduced foam. We can also measure the density of the paint before and after tests and compare it with the control paint. For self-leveling floor coatings, we use a trowel test. The coating is poured on the substrate and a trowel is used to spread the material in a destructive way to incorporate foam. The foam bubbles will disappear rapidly when a deformer is added to flooring systems. As I listen to you both review the many tests, it's clear that we try to simulate various scenarios with different shear and the impact and efficacy of our deformers. How do you rate the results for visual testing and subjective methods? The deforming evaluation is done according to the biggest scale, one to five, where one is the best, no foam, and five is the worst, a lot of foam. Is there anything that customers and formulators need to pay attention to while they're testing deformers? Deforming is a lot of trial and error. Every system is different, and the formula that works in one system may not work in another. It's great to know that there are multiple ways to evaluate foam beyond just looking at your liquid formulation. Thank you both for joining me today and sharing with our audience some of our best practices as we conduct our lab evaluations.